My name is Nellie Deutsch, and I'd like to thank you for being here and allowing me to share my experiences as a teacher of blended learning and blended online learning. Thank you for the invitation, and um, let's learn together. Feel free to add your questions in the comment box below and uh, connect for more. So let me get started. This presentation is based on my teaching experiences with Moodle and other technologies to engage learners in creating content in blended learning courses. A little bit about me. I'm a Canadian education technology expert. I organize free online professional development programs using Moodle and other tech tools for educators worldwide. I've been doing this since 2006. I combine technology with mindfulness, peer learning, and teamwork in all the programs that I teach and organize. I'm a relationship-based mentor, researcher, writer, speaker, and community builder. My teaching experience of 40 years ranges from teaching English as a foreign language in high school and higher education, teaching listening, mindfulness, and leadership courses, both MA at Atlantic University, academic writing at teachers' colleges, and English for academic purposes at technology colleges to teaching how to manage a WHM cPanel server and Moodle installations. My YouTube channel has lots of how-to topics. It all started in 1993 when I started using the computer room to teach English. This is now called Computer Assistant Language Learning, or CALL. In 2003, I developed my own Moodle site and started creating formal web quests. I also began Moodle as an admin and started teaching courses on Moodle. 2009, I started training teachers on how to use Moodle as teachers and administrators. I also started my dissertation research on instructor experiences with implementing technology in blended learning courses in higher education. In 2010, I completed my uh, research and was awarded a Doctor of Education in Educational Leadership specializing in Curriculum and Instruction. My focus was on blended learning. This was done in a blended learning format at the University of Phoenix. Today I'm going to discuss pre-pandemic, during pandemic, and post-pandemic uh, situations, my experiences using Moodle and other technologies, but I also will add some of the experiences of my colleagues. I will focus on blended learning, blended online learning, asynchronous, synchronous, Moodle, Zoom, Big Blue Button, Asynchronous such as uh, Zoom and also virtual reality, Agora, Frame, SimLab, and Alt Space VR. Let's begin with pre pandemic. During the pre pandemic era, I used Moodle and I've been using it as I indicated since 2003. I also taught face to face. Uh, which was most of the hours that my students and I met, but we also met on Moodle so that I could reach each and every one of them. And that was my purpose with Moodle, to be able to connect with each student and cater to their specific needs. It also allowed me to help students create content rather than just uh, listen to me or learn whatever I was teaching them. I wanted them to also be involved. The pre and during pandemic, I followed both, as I mentioned, blended in the pre and during it was fully online. Uh, some of the differences between hybrid or blended and fully online, blended online learning. The blended indicates that they combine something else. With the blended learning, we combine the face-to-face -face or in-person 
and with the online component this could be a live online class it could be even emailing uh, it could be messaging uh, systems it could be on facebook or other lms's such as moodle of course canva blackboard it's in person and any kind of online combination with both synchronous and asynchronous and this is done depending on the school of course on a regular basis or on a weekly or monthly basis with blended online learning which was during the pandemic we were all at home lockdown it was all fully online where we used any means possible with my colleagues it was uh, messaging systems email systems anything that could even by phone that they could connect with their students. I used Moodle because I'd used it before and I was prepared. I call it blended online learning because we blend both the synchronous with the asynchronous. The asynchronous in my case was Moodle, it could be Google Classroom of course, the synchronous could be any system, Zoo alternatives such as Jitsi. That's during the pandemic. Let's go on to my way of teaching. My way was for learners to create content. I used Moodle for engagement. Students were learning by teaching just like me. I was learning just by teaching. I was getting information, finding ways to present the work, to engage learners. And that's what my students learned to do as well. So I was actually teaching my students how to be teachers. And they were learning in the process. That's called peer-based learning. They also used teamwork. They collaborated using Google Docs and other collaborative platforms so that they didn't work alone if they wish. Some students like to work alone, and that is fine as well. During the pandemic, we were fully online. And again, we used the same system. Learning by teaching, students were able to create content and teach each other whether individually or in teams. They used various tools such as recorders to create video tutorials. That's how they were teaching fully online, through videos. They created the videos by screen sharing the way I'm doing it right now, using Lumet, Puzzle, Screencast-O-Matic, which is what I'm using currently, Camtasia, which is quite expensive, but these are all free tools. There are time limitations such as 10 minutes for some, Flipgrid, which is now called Flip, Vimeo, Awesome Screen Recorder, Screen Capture, TechSmith Capture, Padlet, Screencastify, Hippo, and there's so many others. I want to go through some of the differences as I mentioned, asynchronous and synchronous, which is a blend. This is also a blend. If it's fully online using asynchronous and synchronous, then it's bold, blended online learning design. So the platform, notice, with Zoom, it's a one-time engagement. You can't continue Zooming all day. And that's one of the problems or challenges teachers had where they thought that instead of the in-person class, face-to-face, -face, they would be using Zoom, and it didn't work that way. It doesn't. Uh, a virtual live online class is limited. It has lots of limitations, even though you can engage students. It's difficult to sustain the information because the practice is not there. You can't practice in one hour. What you can do on an asynchronous system such as Moodle with ongoing engagement and, of course, practice. And the content is right there. You can't add the content to Zoom. It won't stay there, but it will stay on Moodle. And that's why a learning management system is so powerful. The access to Zoom is at a specific time. The access to Moodle is 24-7, whenever you want, in the middle of the night, in the morning, in the afternoon. It's okay. Devices, well, for Zoom, you can use mobile, desktop, and your browser. For Moodle, you can use the Moodle app, or the Moodle in a browser, or up to 2021, you could use the desktop and your browser. With offline, with Zoom, there's the recording. With Moodle, there's the app for the offline. Post-pandemic is the future of education. Right now, we're in post-pandemic. We, well, pandemic is still here. 
Uh, COVID is still here, but um, we're managing somehow. It's not as powerful as it was at the beginning. So what is the future of education? In my opinion, of course, these are all from my experiences. It will continue the way I've been doing it with collaboration and peer learning. Students will become teachers and teachers are learners by default because that's why they probably went into teaching so that they could learn. That's what teachers do. They learn and teach what they learn. So students who are there or here to learn, they're in school to learn, uh, will be doing the teaching and they will be creating contact. They will be collaborating, lots of collaboration, because social learning is what we're set to do. And it's so much fun to learn with others. Uh, they can annotate a text. Instead of reading a text all by yourself and then answering questions, you could do it together with Aminote, which is an amazing free uh, program, and Hypothesis, which is also free. Uh, and they can annotate together in teams. Video can't be listened to on your own. It's kind of boring. You want to listen with others and you want to learn while you're watching. So there are programs that allow you to do that, such as Anoto, where you can actually watch the video with questions and you can add your question. You don't just have to answer a teacher's question. You can answer your peers' questions. You can add and answer and engage with a video. There's also video and for uh, collaborative annotation. Also, uh, video and is free and at puzzle. Students will be teaching. They will be creators. They will be presenting and creating videos and screen sharing tools. It really is about sharing by video. Future of education will be open. There'll be choices not only for students who can't come to class or don't want to come to class, whether they work or are not able to physically or they're ill or for whatever reason they just don't feel like it. That's fine. You can still learn. You don't have to be limited by a physical classroom or room. You can learn anywhere at any time. We've got the tools. That's how we're going to do it. And it's called HyFlex because it's flexible. You can use Moodle or other learning management systems with synchronous or without it and use different synchronous systems. And as I said, since students will also be teachers, they'll be providing tools of what they've learned. They'll be creating videos of what they learned. They just won't be taking tests that are meaningless to them. Uh, evaluations will be meaningful to both students and teachers. There'll be learner autonomy and teachers will learn how to support and encourage independent learning, whether individually or in teams. There'll be life skills, learning mindfulness and other ways to uh, improve the quality of your brain and it can be improved. In other words, life will be a lot easier and less stressful, hopefully, with um, collaborative social learning and learning to take care of yourself. Peer-based learning, of course, will continue because it's teaching by learning. Well, this is what the high flex model looks like. The professor or teacher at the top. This is for post-pandemic. Uh, You'll have a choice in class. The professor will be in class unless the professor can't come to class, and that will be fine too. Uh, there's no need to stop learning when the professor is not there or when students aren't there. Learning can go on. It's not limited to a time or place. So students could be using their laptops or smartphones. Uh, they can record the Zoom themselves, or the teacher can record and share. Uh, the teacher will share the presentations. There'll be live, as I said, Zoom meetings, but the Moodle, the asynchronous, will be available with all the content and the engagement because, as you noticed before, Zoom is limited to a time and, uh, of course, uh, to a place you can't move from your seat unless you're watching the recordings. Student will have a choice whether to be in person, watching the live Zoom, or in class, or virtually watching the live Zoom or watching the recordings on Moodle. Students will be able to work on Moodle in class collaboratively with others, or they can 
study with others, but where everyone is in their own place. They don't have to be in one place at one time. And this is really, really important. So learning by teaching will continue. Peer-based learning where students teach one another will continue and collaborative learning will continue. Um, one of the things that students will also do, but also teach, and this is something that I did with teachers during the uh, pandemic and post-pandemic, is teach them how to create their own Moodle course. But this is for students as well. Students will be creating courses for topics that interest them, and they'll be adding each other. Those that are interested will go into their courses. So there'll be lots of uh, Moodle courses or other LMSs where students do the work. And this is all possible. Once students learn what's behind an online course, it'll be a lot easier for them. So they'll learn how to create a syllabus and add their work there. A Moodle course will consist of the name of the course. Students can do that. The topic sections, as many topics as they wish, depending on the length of the course. Descriptions of the topics, whether by dates or weeks, Resources, students will add resources, which is the content, activities, various engaging activities for students, and maybe for teachers. I mean, teachers could be students in the students' courses as well. And the grade book set up, students will set up the grades. Yes, they'll come up with it, the rubrics and so on. Course completion, uh, the criteria for that, badges, they'll create badges and the criteria for badges based on activities, and they'll also create a certificate for those that complete the course. So teachers will be teachers and students will become teachers. And then there'll be weekly digital badges or badges based on other criteria, not by week, by topics, sections, and so on. And a certificate will look like this. This is an example of an online digital certificate. In addition to that, Virtual worlds like Meta are mushrooming up as we speak and lots of free ones and students will be able to create their own learning environments using virtual world meetings. They'll create the buildings, build the activities and invite students and teachers and faculty and so on to come into their worlds and learn from them. Well, actually, with and from them. So immersive learning is the future in virtual worlds. And the virtual worlds are uh, VR, virtual reality, second life, and other virtual worlds. And there are many of them. If you're interested in learning more about them and the ones that are free, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to help in any way that I can. These are some of the references. You can take a look at them. This PowerPoint presentation will be available for those who would like it. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.